desolate, empty landscape. All you have to your name is the clothes on your back. Your one goal, stay alive. And no, I'm not talking about that vacation to Buffalo. Today on Game Files, it's all about the history of survival games. One of the weird things about survival games is that they've always kind of had their core identity defined since the very beginning. The idea of getting dumped into a hostile world, forced to collect resources with the sole objective of not dying, is a fundamental part of the human experience. At least, it was until society happened. Sure, we did get some early precursors, like everyone's favorite classroom time waster, Oregon Trail. Oregon Trail puts you in the shoes of a group of settlers journeying to the American frontier, forcing the player to deal with the challenges presented by the untamed wilderness. The majority of the game is spent managing your settlers' well-being and overcoming injuries, broken wagon wheels, and the hunt for food. Not to mention dysentery. Since its original text-only version in 1971, Oregon Trail has been re-released and updated for decades, meaning that kids today can still whittle away the hours trying to keep their settlers alive in this early survival classic. Still, it took another 15 years for our first true survival game to come around. Wilderness, a survival adventure dropped in 1986 and includes pretty well everything you'd expect from a fully fledged survival game despite being text only. You are a survivor of a plane crash and have to find your way back to civilization while managing your hunger, thirst and fatigue. After that, another six years went by before the next survival game came out. Unreal World, originally released in 1992, started its life as an ASCII roguelike but transitioned into a super hardcore modern survival game. Set during the Iron Age in Finland, Unreal World allows you to become a trapper, fisherman, or other ancient profession in your attempts to survive. With simulated weather, AI-controlled animals, and more, it took until Dwarf Fortress in 2006 for another game to match Unreal World's level of complexity. Another fun fact about Unreal World, it is still getting patched to this day, making it the longest lasting roguelike of all time. That's 27 years of constant support. That is insane. Props to the devs, seriously. After that, for nearly two decades, we got pure survival games at the rate of maybe one per year. Unlike other genres at the time, survival games weren't big enough hits to spawn a massive wave of titles, at least not yet. Still, the games that did come out further developed and refined the basic formula. Robinson's Requiem's main contribution was its rather complex crafting system, which had become a staple of the survival genre. Trail of the Sun a few years later took survival into the 3D realm, while survival kids expanded the appeal of the genre with its more cartoony, accessible presentation that's basically identical to the GBA Zeldas. Stranded combined crafting, base building, and character management into a fully-fledged first-person experience. Lost in Blue on the DS was a pretty deep yet accessible survival game that featured a bit more of a plot, with the main duo trying to survive while dodging the bandits that reside on the island. Finally, Worm Online. Until now, the survival game was a solo experience, man versus nature, that whole thing. But Worm Online, while not explicitly a pure survival experience, was one of the first games to merge survival elements with multiplayer. Basically, you have the ability to terraform your surroundings and build up resources by mining, developing cities, and crafting all while either cooperating or fighting with your fellow players. We should also mention Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, which heavily incorporated survival elements into its formula. It was a clear sign that the survival genre was slowly gaining traction and that more and more of its elements would appear in other games and popular franchises. The next few years are mostly dedicated to sequels, so much lost in blue, but then came one blocky game that took the survival game to the next level. Minecraft hit Alpha in 2009 and quickly became a phenomenon. I'm sure I don't need to explain to you what makes Minecraft awesome. But needless to say that it's an awesome balance between crafting, building, and light survival was a perfect blend to capture the imagination of gamers. Minecraft quickly became one of the most successful games of all time and proved that survival games had legs. It turns out that when a game has no set finish and a world of possibilities to explore, people can invest a ridiculous amount of time and money into it. Who knew? Another super important game in the modern surge of survival games was DayZ. Originally a mod of Arma 2, DayZ quickly became way more popular than the game it spawned from. 
For the uninitiated, DayZ is a hardcore multiplayer survival game that has you play as a survivor in a post-apocalyptic, zombie-filled world. While its individual elements weren't necessarily unique, DayZ was an innovative mix of resource gathering, tense combat, and the freedom to work or murder and steal from your fellow man. The Merciless survival game took off almost immediately. Between Minecraft and DayZ, survival games had two massive hits on the casual and hardcore ends of the spectrum. This kicked off the modern wave of survival titles flooding the shelves. If we only had a trickle of survival games for the first 30 years of the genre, that certainly was not the case anymore. Some followed in the footsteps of Minecraft, such as Terraria and Don't Starve, both of which stand out thanks to their unique presentation. Others went the DayZ route, emphasizing player interactions and hardcore survival gameplay like Rust, Conan Exiles and Ark, Survival Evolved. And still others returned to an old school style of survival game, a pure single player experience. This includes The Forest, The Long Dark, Subnautica, and This War of Mine. Even as recently as the last few years, we've gotten some more games that push the survival genre. Scum is detailed to the point of insanity. I mean, come on, it has a meter for your teeth. While Metal Gear Survive highlights just how garbage the genre can be. Yeah, not all survival games are winners. That being said, the modern surge of survival games does seem to be petering off just a bit. In just a few years, the genre went from nearly barren to overwhelmed with choice. And since gamers can play a single survival game for a long time, it's tough to compete with established titles. But I can only imagine that this genre, like so many others, will adapt. It's already become a part of plenty of other genres, incorporated into action and adventure titles across the board. After all, in video games, as in life, there's really only one objective, survive.